welcome to this quick video where I want to highlight five quick tips for working with Azure Synapse Analytics notebooks. These tips are going to be more focused on the user interface and just kind of usability enhancements and things that exist here. There's obviously plenty more than this, but these are five quick tips that I enjoy working with. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in. Number one, key bindings. People always ask, where can I find the key binding? It's not actually as intuitive as you might think. However, if I come into my Spark notebook right here, I'm gonna zoom in and I click on variables, which variables are cool in and of themselves. Down here in the bottom, you're gonna see, not only do I see the value of my variables, but key bindings are right here. And so now I can come in and find all of the different key commands that are available inside of Azure Synapse Notebooks. And of course, there's a ton of them in there. So that's gonna be tip number one, five tips for working with notebooks. All right, tip number two, and this is another one that might not be that intuitive to you, but if you've worked with Synapse Analytics for any length of time, usually when you go to publish your artifacts, especially if you haven't set this up with a Git repository or Azure DevOps, something like that, you generally have to make sure everything is configured before you can publish out. However, when you're working with notebooks, unlike pipelines and data flows, you can publish only that notebook. You don't have to wait until everything is ready to publish. So instead of coming up here to the top and clicking publish all, I can just click right here and it'll only publish that notebook irrespective and irregardless of everything else that's going on. Again, that's super cool really easy and a really nice feature. The other thing I want to highlight, which I've already opened up here on the screen, is taking advantage of this outline capability. The outline just kind of happens inherently and organically as a result of using the markdown cells that are available inside of your notebooks. But knowing that, you can really set this up to be a great navigational tool as it's meant to be. But I've seen a lot of notebooks and a lot of people who aren't using these which I think is a little bit of uh, not the best. So a lot of my notebooks that I have over here, a lot of my notebooks have a lot of lab challenges for the classes and things that we do, and then some tips and tricks and things like that and documentation. And so I put all of that in my outline so it's easy to find. So tip number three, uh, working with the outline and really taking advantage of those markdown cells that are available inside of your notebook. The, the next thing I want to point out that I really, really like is closing these tabs inside of, you know, anytime you're developing and you're flipping between a lot of different notebooks, it's very easy um, to have a lot of notebooks open that you're not modifying, you're not changing, you haven't done anything with, or you've published them previously and you just want to close, you want to close down all of the notebooks that don't really have any changes associated with them to give yourself a little more real estate. So what you can do really cool is all the way over here on the right i can click this ellipsis right here and tell that i want to close all of the unmodified tabs and that'll close all of the tabs that are open that do not have any changes associated with them of course you also have the option of closing all tabs or you can kind of get this list of different notebooks and choose from the list that is available which is super cool as well all right so closing unmodified tabs tip number four and finally the best of them all saved for last. Tip number five, I love this one right here. This is reusing your Spark session over and over and over again so that you don't have to wait two, three, four minutes for the Spark session to spin up each time you move from one notebook to another. That is a very painful experience. However, watch this. You know that if I come over here and open up this notebook and I run one of the code cells inside of this notebook here, if I come in here and I do that, I'm going to have to wait two or three minutes, maybe four minutes to spin up a session of this Spark pool that I'm currently pointing to. However, if you look back on this notebook, I have a session that's already running. So why can't I use that session for this notebook? And the answer is now you can. It's a little bit hidden, but this is really cool. So if I come over here to the right and I go over here to the ellipsis again, not the one we went to before, but the one just below it, I can go to manage sessions. By the way, I also like clear output, clears the entire notebook in one, one snap there. But manage sessions is really cool. And if I click manage sessions, what I can do is you'll see I have this session. This session is currently tied to this notebook right here. 
the name is always going to be associated with whatever the first notebook was. So take that for what it is. And I don't even have to disconnect it from the original notebook in order to use it. What I can do instead is just select it in the new notebook that I'm in, go down to the bottom and click connect. And within a couple of seconds here, you'll see it's ready. Boom. I mean, it doesn't even take a couple seconds. It's fast. And this is awesome because now I'm in a new notebook reusing that session and I don't have to wait three or four seconds. And I have 60 or 70 notebooks when I'm building a class that I'm cleaning, I'm transforming, I'm making changes to. And it's painful when I have to wait every single time I go from a notebook to another notebook and wait for that Spark session to spin up. But that right there is a game changing feature. It's super cool. So that right there was five quick tips to working with Azure Synapse notebooks. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that if you are like the video that you hit like and subscribe and you follow us here at Pragmatic Works. See ya.